Hello, my name is Johnny Best, and I'm going to be showing you how to create a realistic glass in Blender. Now, this is a, uh, it's a scene I'm going to show you how to make. Uh, pretty simple, just uh, some glass stuff, uh, glass cups and mug there, and also a marble for the marble con counter for the glass to reflect off of to make it look more like glass. And then, of course, you also got a pot in the background. So, uh, it's a pretty simple scene. Uh, not much to it. Uh, as I said, there's the glass cups there, the pot, and the table, and then, of course, some basic lighting. And I also have a, a defocus set up here. Uh, but I, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to use it because it takes a while to render. So, I'll be showing you the credit, as I said, and uh, we'll get started very soon. To start with, we'll open up, open up a new scene in Blender. And I'll just carefully move that. So I'm just going to start off by uh, creating the table here. So just by shrinking, sizing, and so I want to make sure I don't scale along the z-axis. Uh, but by shrink shrinking and scaling this uh, default cube that we get in Blender, I'll create the table. Uh, nothing special, just a cube that's going to be uh, beveled slightly. Bevel left to go to the modifiers. A bevel modifier. Blender 2.49, it was, what well, it wasn't a bevel modifier. It was something you could do in edit, edit mode. But just quickly, just create some bevel like that. And then I'm also going to add a loop cut right in the center of this table so that uh, I'll, I'll just make it a little more round. Scale that little loop cut there. So that's just a table, just pretty basic. And that'll be our the base for our. <clears throat> wine glass. So to start with, I'm going to put the cursor on, on the table, and I'm going to add a, a cylinder. This is going to be our table. I mean, um, our wine, our, our, our glasses. So we're just going to move that uh, cylinder or scale it so that it uh, is going to be our little thin part of our wine glass. As you saw in the finished picture, I'm going to be making more than just a wine glass, but this is going to be a, a starting, I guess you could say. So, just uh, by going to edit mode, once you've got this shape, we're just going to start. Uh, oops, careful here. We're just going to start extruding, base of, extruding the base of this. Uh, if you watch the uh, wine tutorial, wine glass tutorial, wine glass tutorial on my website, I'm sure you can figure out how to make a wine glass. It's actually not very difficult, but this is not a modeling. Tutorial. So anyway, that's the base, and that's a little stem, or I mean, the little thin part. So now I'll start making the the base like this. That doesn't look right. Oops. Delete those. I just left all the vertices in the top. Some are escaping. Oops. So let's just start extruding upwards and creating the wine glass base. I will simply be doing this a little bit fast so that it doesn't take too long. This time is an issue. It's very simple, the wine glass, I'm doing this from memory. Creating the cup of it. Like so. So now I'm just going to select that line right there and just extrude inwards so that the wine glass has the appearance of thickness. So anyway, that one glass looks a little bit funny. Do a little bit it's fixing here, scale that, and also bring it downwards. Wait, scale it. Ugh. Scale it now. There you go. Alright, it's gonna look a little bit weird, but anyhow. We're just gonna continue on. So Start with we're gonna shade smooth so that you don't get those little pixelated stuff. And is that it? No, I guess I'll um, no almost fix that little thing right there. Uh so that it's not thin. I mean this so it's thinner right there. I guess we'll also move that down. So that looks better. Then it's probably good enough. I think uh hmm. I guess it looks good. 
perfect. Let's make it a little bit thicker as well. Make that small scale that more. So anyway, that's fine. So I'm, I guess I'll add a subsurf. There we go. Just to smooth things out. So that's a wine glass, and we're going to get started with the rest of our glasses here. So just by taking that wine glass and moving it right there. And I guess we can also position the camera to a good view. Similar to the view we had seen I showed you in the first place. Anyway, uh, scale it on the y axis so that we can get it so it looks nice, and then we'll just, uh, I guess, position, the, position this camera a little better. And I guess we'll move that along the y, the wild glass along the y axis. And I said we'll just make sure that this camera is in a nice position, similar to the one we had in the first place. <sighs> okay. So, just making a little bit of adjustments here. Make everything look nice. Alright, so now we will start uh, creating the rest of the glasses. So, to start with, we will duplicate this wine glass here by pressing Shift D. And just grab that and move it alongside the wine glass. And then we'll just start shaping shaping the uh, the the cup out of this little starting thing right here by extruding simple that doesn't look good I'll move that higher up Actually, that was kind of funny I guess I'll just move that down a little more alright that's pretty simple and I'll, so, I'll give that uh, cup some thickness Shooting and size and then sizing, so that looks pretty good. And then I'll shade smooth. And then, as you can see, there's some lines there. That's good. that means that they recalculate the or normals, I guess. So we'll just go down here and press recalculate, and they disappear. So that's pretty simple. And uh, I don't want the subsurf right there. Wait, I want a edge split, just like that. Simple. So now I'm going to create the cup alongside the wine glass. Uh, so just duplicate that, and we'll start using that to create the the, the, the glass cup. Uh, it shouldn't be too hard, I hope. So just so I'm just going to drag those down. This is not a focus for modeling, obviously. Uh, it's more just going to be focused on the material, so I don't want to take too long here. Just uh, carefully doing this at the same time, doing it fast. Just making the basic shape of a cup. Like that. I guess I'll just fix that a little bit right there. Scale that and grab that line right there and just move, scale that a little bit too. Alright, so now I'll just very quickly also create the handle of the cup. That over here, and just scale that and make it so it looks nice. Hope I'm not dragging on with this. And just very quickly, I'll start extruding the cup handle so that you get a good result. this. Alright, so there it is, the cup handle looks nice. Oh, oh oops, give that some thickness. The cup right there. Like so. <clears throat> and we'll uh, shade smooth. And I'll erase the edge split as a subdivision surface. Maybe I want the edge split. Hmm. Hmm. Recalculate. Uh, hmm. This doesn't look right. Hmm. It's weird. I'm just gonna get rid of that edge split, actually. I think. Second, actually. First, I'll just make this 
fit all the outline the, the uh, cup cup thickness like that. Hope we're not watching using the tutorial of how how to model a cup because I'm not doing the best job in the world of it. I'll just uh, move that slightly into the cup a little more. So there it is. I'll just get rid of the edge split as well. So that's the cup. Pretty simple. So now we'll get into the materials of, of glass. It's actually very simple to creating realistic glass. Start with, we'll uh, add a new material uh, quickly. So just going to the materials panel, adding new material. We'll be using very few uh, easy tools to create this glass uh, to start with. Uh, mm, what is it? Oh, well, first we have to uh, check transparency. And we're also uh, going to check mirror to make it reflective. And that's practically it. Uh, make sure you turn the alpha to zero with the transparency and change the type to ray trace and change the IOR to 1.1. That's a big thing because glass distorts whatever is behind it. And as you can see, it's doing just that. If I turn this IOR to 1.1, the default, if you go back up here, you can see that it looks practically invisible except for that specularity. So, yeah, IOR is important, uh, 1.1. You could turn it higher if you want to, but it's not necessary since IOR will take longer to render than if you make it higher. Also, make sure you put the reflectivity to something like 0.1 to make it reflective, because glass is definitely reflective. And uh, that's practically it to get gla the glass results, uh, the glass results that I used. Uh, so, we'll just uh, do a little add thing here. Uh, we'll change the depth of this to what, uh, 4, I guess, or 6. And same thing here. And that's it. We'll just call it glass so we can apply it to the rest of our things here and just make sure that we get in that. That's pretty simple. Uh, pretty basic as well. And that's it. That's how it really that's it. So now, if you hit render, this will be the result you get right here. So it's looking like glass, but we still have a few things to do. To start with, we have to give this table here a texture, uh, which we didn't do. So we'll just, we'll just change the texture of this to. Uh, oh, what did I change this to? Uh, oh, whoops! Change it to image or, or moving. And I'm going to select a marble texture I got off uh, CG Textures. It's a very useful place full of textures, image textures. Oh, it's over here. Let's see, it's called Marble Green. <clears throat> Alright, and we're going to uh, split this view and UV project the image so that it's not distorted. Uh, just select everything, press U, and project from view. Alright. And that's it. There we go. Just change the mapping to UV. And that's what it looks like, just plenty fine. I guess you can change intensity, diffuse intensity to one, and uh, join those two. That's it to the granite, and also I guess I'll very quickly set up a quick lighting scheme here. Uh, change the default lamp to an area, position the area so that's above the the glasses. If you're not familiar with areas, areas are a useful thing for stuff when it comes to like stuff like studio lighting. If you're watching what I'm doing, just change the distance to something shorter, and the energy to shorter, uh, smaller as well. And I guess I'll change this to make a size of this bigger as well. Because this is a rectangle, rectangle uh, that table with the changes to rectangle, so that covers the entire thing evenly. So that's good, I think. Alright, let's maybe turn the energy down even more. The energies are powerful. And also turn on no shadow. Because I'm going to have a spotlight create the shadow. Just change that duplicated area to a spotlight. Uh, just just leave diffuse there. 
and also turn the energy down and also make sure this has a shadow because this is going to be a, the shadow of our object alright so we'll just have to uh, I guess render this is our result at the, uh, here and uh, still looks bad uh, that's because of the fact that we still have our gray background I'm able to turn the spotlight energy up even more I guess because the shadow is not showing up that much Point three, I guess, and turn the area energy up as well. I mean, down. Excuse me. And what was it? Oh yeah. Uh, make sure you change the world options as well because remember the color of the background was black. I mean, it needs to be black. That does it. Um. So yeah, that's gonna fix that nasty gray background. And what was I gonna do? Oh yeah, uh, we're going to add a depth of field to our image to do this electric camera and uh, go to the camera options and turn the limits on so you can see that where the defocus will be and set your depth of field to the wine glass which is called cylinder. That's pretty simple. Now we're just going to go to the new editor, compositing nodes, use nodes and backdrop and very quickly we'll add a defocus node. Uh, the defocus is used first off like depth of field. Uh, if you're if you're good, if you're good with photography, you'll definitely know what depth of field is, and there's tutorials on how to use it. Uh, but this is just me doing very quickly, adding a defocus node, connecting to the compositor, and also make sure you connect the Z of the render layer to the Z of the defocus, and you should uh, have your have that done. So now we're just uh, we're gonna hit F12, otherwise known as rendering. So that's the result we get, right? Here, there we go. So it looks terrible. That's because we had to do a little, do a little more fiddling with that uh, defocus, I guess. Whole image is blurred. That's because we have to give it, you know, the right defocus, obviously. So let's get out of here. Uh, get back to the node editor, uh, and uh, we'll add a viewer. So you can see what we do. And connect it to the defocus. And we'll turn off preview. Also, turn on Z buffer. Use Z buffer. Change the f stop to 10. Wait for it to composite. Okay, there it is. So that's the defocus. Uh, hopefully, done, hopefully done quick enough. Just hit up, uh, F11. You can see the finished result uh, automatically done for you. Oh. There we go. So, uh, actually, we're done. Uh, we've uh, done the glass effects under the focus. And the reason why that glass looks black right there is because it's reflecting a black sky. If you wanted to avoid that, you could uh, make it smaller or shorter. You could move it farther in, in, in toward, into the table. Uh, and also, you could you know, do a whole bunch of things. You could change the camera angle as well. And also, one thing you notice is that we did not model the pot, and that's because. Uh, it would take too long, and it's not necessary. But, Sonar, right, there we are. We're done. Uh, I hope you learned something from this tutorial, uh, how to create uh, realistic glass effects. Uh, glass is a cool thing, and also very easy, as you can see. So, anyway, there we are. We're done. Goodbye.